So what we want to do now is we have this, this nice map here. Um, I'm going to zoom in a little bit just so we can see our trees a little bit better. I'd like to visualize all these different trees in the colors based on the kind of tree that they are. So as I said before, when you have a shape file, shape files actually include all this other data here. We don't yet know what all of these different files mean, and maybe you'll never know, but an important thing is that along with the shapes, so the boundaries of each neighborhood, the location of each one of these trees, the shape of the road, there's also extra information that comes down along with that. If we right click our layer, open attribute table is going to show us all of the information that we have about these trees. So right click the trees layer, open attribute table. It processes for a little bit and then it will tell us how tall each tree is, how wide each tree is, what street it's on, the condition of the tree, and the type of tree, along with some extra information here. So what I want to end up doing is use the name of the tree in order to color it. Let's see what other kind of information we have for these other different layers. Let's right click Athens Roads and go to Open Attribute Table. Here we go. This is all the information we have on the roads here. Notice that this shows up poorly. Now it's outside of the scope of this video, but when you are importing data that might not be, let's say in English, into QGIS, it might become difficult for it to understand what the text should look like. My computer, because it wants to read English language, is going to have trouble reading Greek. There are fixes for that, but let's just say we're not going to worry about it right now. Do the same thing right here. Right click the layer, open attribute table, and now we see the information that we have on each neighborhood. The first thing I want to do is I want to color each one of these trees, but I don't really like the color of the neighborhoods. This purple color just doesn't sit very well with me. So I'm going to change the color of the neighborhoods to be something a little bit lighter. So I'm going to right click my neighborhoods and I'm going to go down to properties. If you want to change the color of something, you might think that styles is the way to do it. And while it would allow me to change the color right now, it's not the best way to change colors. So I'm going to go to properties and then I'm going to go to Symbology. Symbology will allow me to change everything about the way this layer is visualized. As you can see right now, it's being visualized as purple. I'm going to change this to maybe a light yellow color, something a little bit more gentle and a little bit more looking like earth. So that seems pretty good for me. I'm going to click apply. And yeah, that's all right. Maybe I also want to increase the width of these borders between each neighborhood. If I want to do that, instead of fill, I'm going to click simple fill. And underneath simple fill, it says stroke color, black, that's fine. And then stroke width, 0.26 millimeters. To increase that, I'll just click up once and then click apply. Maybe I'll do it one more time to make it look a little bit more obvious. Now you might say, why did I have to click simple fill instead of just fill? Because you could change the color here, so why did I have to, in order to change the stroke, select something else? Because QGIS is free, I let it do whatever it wants. The alternative to software like QGIS is software called ArcGIS, which costs thousands and thousands of dollars. So the fact that we're able to do any of this for free is just amazing. So now that I have 0.66, I click apply, I click OK, things are looking a little bit better. Now I'm going to take these trees and in the same way 
that I styled the neighborhoods, I'm going to style the trees. So I'm going to click the trees, right click, properties, and then once again I'm in symbology. If I just wanted all of the trees to look the same, we could do the same thing that we did with the neighborhoods. Right now, they're this red color, which isn't so bad, but they're a little big, and I don't know if I like this border around them. So what I might do is I'd say, instead of two, let's make them eh, 1.6. How does that look? Maybe even a little bit smaller. Sure, that looks a lot cleaner. Now if I want to get rid of the border around them, I'm going to click Simple Marker, and then instead of stroke style solid line, I'm going to change that to no pen. What that will do is it will take the outline around my object and then make it disappear. I click Apply, and there we go. That's looking pretty good. Another thing I could also change if I went back to Marker is the opacity. Right now, when we have a lot of different trees in the same place, for example, down here, you can't really tell if this is a lot of trees on top of each other or just a few. By adjusting opacity, we make them a little bit see-through, which means that trees that are stacked on top of each other end up looking darker than trees that are alone on a street. So we can see now that this area has trees but it's not as dense with trees as, let's say, this area right here. So, this is a pretty good map of the density of trees that exists in one part of Athens. Now, what we wanted to do, though, was color them based on the kind of tree that they are. So remember, right-click our layer, open attribute table. On the left over here, it lists the type of tree. So we're going to say, please color each circle based on the type of tree that it is. The way we're going to do that is we're going to right-click the layer, Properties, and go back to Symbology. Right now, we have Single Symbol selected. Single Symbol means make every single one of these trees look the same. In order to change that, we're going to click Single Symbol, and now we have a few more options. The two you usually use are either Categorized or Graduated. Categorized means take each one of my symbols, either neighborhoods or circles or anything, roads, and then color them based on categories. Graduated means use a number to slowly change the color from one color to another. So for example, we could say short trees are one color, tall trees are another color, and as trees get bigger, gradually change their color. In this case, we're making each tree a different color based on the type of tree that it is, so that's more like a category. So what you need to do is click single symbol and then categorized. The first thing it asks us is what column we're interested in using. We're interested in the name column. Next up, we have to pick what colors. I think random colors are fine, so now we're just going to say, please classify all of these based on the name. If you look at this, 1, 10, 100, 101, it seems kind of odd that these would be the names of trees, because they're not the names of trees, they're just numbers. If you scroll down and scroll down though, you see down here actual names of trees. It turns out some of our trees don't have name filled out, so then they just get a number. These trees we don't care about, so what I'm going to do is click the last one, hold down the shift key, click the first one, and then say delete them. So now it's only these trees here that are getting assigned colors. In order to see the output, 
all we need to do is click apply. And there we go. All of our trees have been colored in based on our type.